the NASCAR clash of the call. See him happen. Let's talk about it. So that was kind of weird. The NASCAR Clash of the Coliseum was supposed to be on Sunday, February 4th. Instead, it was on Saturday, February 3rd, because of a bomb cyclone that is going to hit Los Angeles and dump up to six inches of rain on downtown Los Angeles. Not ideal if you're trying to have a NASCAR race there. So instead of sitting around and waiting it out for the entire week, NASCAR decided to do an unprecedented move and move the race to Saturday night and run it on FS1 and make the event free for everybody. Now you're probably sitting here going, well, why didn't they just wait it out? Not to get too dark here, but NASCAR had a bit of a Sophie's choice here. You either run it on Saturday night, eat all those tickets and issue everybody a refund, know that you're going to take a huge ratings hit, but you're able to get the race in, tear the track up, and get everybody out before hopefully the storm kind of rolls in and gets really heavy. Or you sit around and wait until probably Wednesday, then you run the race in front of basically the same size crowd, if not less, on an even worse time slot during the middle of the week. NASCAR was in a lose-lose here, and they just they they bit the bullet in a sense, and they just took the lesser of two evils here. They ran it on Saturday night, mainly out of, you know, a safety concern of getting everybody out. Because, of course, when they have Daytona prep, they need to get all those haulers back. And sitting around Los Angeles while there's life-threatening flooding. According to the National Weather Service, 94% of the state was going to face life-threatening flooding, possibly at least. That is an unprecedented amount of water that is going to come down. Up in the mountains outside, in, outside of Los Angeles and Southern California, they could see up to 15 inches of rain. It makes total sense to run this race on Saturday and get everybody out. So that's exactly what they did. Now, everybody that had tickets to the, that event, myself included, does it suck? Absolutely. Was I in the midst of trying to travel to Los Angeles? Yes. It's unfortunate. I'm not mad about it. I think NASCAR made absolutely the right decision here. Uh, yeah, sure. I got stuck in an airport on one of the worst travel days I've ever had in my entire life. Had to watch this race in an airport and then on a plane trying to get back home. At the end of the day, I get my money back. I get credits for those flights. It's not the biggest deal in the world for me. I understand. There are some people that aren't going to be in the same position as me. Uh, and, and that's unfortunate. I do feel bad for everybody that spent money for hotels, couldn't get refunds for that, can't get refunds for their flights. And, and then, of course, you're getting money back for your tickets which is great as well. Um, but I get it. There's going to be some upset people here. At the end of the day, I think NASCAR made the right decision here. And we saw a really good race. On a scale of 1 to 100, which I always do on TikTok, if you don't follow me, at Breakheart on TikTok, uh, I always do after each race, was it a good race, kind of like Jeff Gluck's poll, and give it a rating. This race, I'm giving it an 80 out of 100. I thought this was the best clash of the Coliseum that we've seen so far. And I know there's only three races. It's a small sample size. But at the end of the day, it was a pretty solid race top to bottom. Sure, you had Ty Gibbs going out there and dominating the race, leading like 84 laps. You had Denny Hamlin leading like 58 laps. Joey Logano led eight laps, I believe, and Brad Keselowski led a lap. Uh, so you had kind of two dominant cars there between the 54 and the 11. But the racing throughout the field was really, really good. You had Ryan Blaney take a champion's provisional, essentially, starting last on the field in 23rd and driving up to third place over those 150 laps. Sure, there was some carnage that helped him get out there, or get up there, but at the end of the day, pretty solid racing top to bottom. The track's tiny. From a short track standpoint, I think it works really well because you're not as hampered as you are at maybe a Martinsville or a Richmond or even a Bristol with how bad the short track package has been with the Gen 7 car, but I think this race did really well. It took shifting out of the equation as well, thanks to a gearing change. I think that helped out a bit. Um, it was a bit more momentum-based in a sense. Cars were absolutely using up their brakes, though. Those rotors were glowing red. It was it was pretty, pretty evident very quickly that some people were going to have brake issues. I believe Todd Gillen ended up having a brake issue as well. Again, kind of in and out of being able to hear when I'm sitting in an airport. I did watch some of the some of the race when I got home at 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Overall, I thought it was a good race top to bottom. Here you had plenty of controversy. You had drivers getting mad at each other. Joey Logano, Ty Gibbs exchanging words after the race. On track, you had Ross Chastain absolutely walling Tyler Reddick uh, after the checkered flag. You had Kyle Larson admitting he dumped Bubba Wallace, which I'm sure will help just absolutely fire up his fan base there. But overall, again, like I said, pretty solid racing top to bottom. When you look at it here, you have the winner who started first, obviously, for Denny. Kyle Busch started fifth. Ryan Blaney started 23rd. And then you had Chase Briscoe who started 22nd. He gets up to seventh. 
Martin Drex Jr. started 19th, he gets up to 9th, so you had a lot of comers and goers here over those 150 laps. Uh, they had a halftime break, Machine Gun Kelly decided not to show up, so didn't get that performance, which I'm sure the 5,000 people in attendance were bummed about that. But speaking of attendance, for a race that was announced as being held that night, four hours before the green flag fell, and that was going to be free, it was a pretty decent crowd that showed up. Because originally it was just supposed to be heat races on Saturday night, and Fans were going to come if they could. I mean, the amount of fans that made such an uproar on social, you would think that that you know, whole Coliseum was going to be packed uh, because all the fear mongers out there are like, oh, you're going to let all the homeless people in. There's going to be people getting stabbed in the stands. Listen, when they opened the gates up before they even announced that the clash was going to happen on Saturday night, there were maybe, maybe 300 people there. Exactly why NASCAR originally was just going to run it behind closed doors because staffing it was just kind of stupid and a waste of money at the end of the day they end up making the clash free running in on saturday night and they had a pretty solid crowd there probably between like five thousand and seven thousand people and for a four hour advance and telling people that they can get there not that bad especially because like unless you're checking your email or social you weren't going to learn about this more than likely so they did a good job and all the drivers commented on how just like in tune the crowd was, how engaged they were with what was happening, how diverse the crowd was. It was young, it was diverse. It was all the things that NASCAR wanted with the LA Coliseum race. And at the end of the day, that's a win because hopefully they can turn some of those people into being fans. This is also coming on the heels of NASCAR releasing NASCAR Full Speed, the Netflix docuseries this past week. And then to have the main guy, Denny Hamlin, who basically dominated that show, go out and win the race, the script played out perfectly. I got an advanced copy of the script and I'll tell you guys, I knew people immediately weren't going to be happy that Denny won, but from a marketing standpoint, makes a ton of sense that they were able to do this. I didn't get an advanced copy, there's no script, this isn't WWE, but it's just funny to see people freak out about it. Regardless, this race was was really good. Uh, I, did, I did have to laugh, pulling my notes up here so I make sure I didn't miss anything. I did have to laugh, laugh at Joey Logano going down and talking to... Ty Gibbs, because it was basically like Joey Logano talking to a younger version of his self. Young Ty Joffrey Gibbs over here doesn't want to hear it. Joey's now the veteran who was in that, you know, role when he was 19 or 20, getting yelled at by Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick, the list goes on and on. And now Joey's the older guy yelling at the young guy now. And I'm sure Joey kind of picked up some fans from that, which is bizarre because most fans seemingly hate Joey Logano. And they hate Ty Gibbs because I think Ty Gibbs was born on third base, even though Joey Logano was pretty much born on third base as well. Granted, he got fired and, you know, Penske picked him up and it has worked out for the best for him. But yeah, overall, like the race. I like the qualifying format as well, right? 36 cars showed up, 23 make the field, 22 on speed, plus a provisional. Uh, so you had some big names go home. You had, it was a bad day to be a Christopher. Chris Buescher and Chris Rebell both got bounced out. John Hunter Nemechek didn't make it either. No, sorry. Eric Jones didn't make it either. Yeah, overall, it was... Um, it was fine. Like I, I liked the race. I thought it was good. I thought the qualifying was fun. Um, we always saw Josh Williams in the 16 Kala car make it in, which would have been really cool for he and that team. Uh, but like I said, overall, I'm giving this race an 80. I liked it. I, uh, the clash is more than likely not going back to the Coliseum. NASCAR had a three-year deal, first deal, first year, and then two options for NASCAR to pick it up, 2023, 2024. They've done that. I don't think they're going to go back and build this again. They have, of course, discussed maybe going to Mexico, whether that be Guadalajara or Mexico City. I'll make another video on that and kind of talk about what the future of the clash is from that standpoint. But top to bottom, good race. The NASCAR Mexico Series race, I recorded that and watched it on Sunday morning. Uh, solid race overall. I think those cars probably fit this track better and handle it you know, a little bit uh, easier than what the NASCAR, you know, Gen 7 Cup car does. Those cars remind me a bit of the Gen 4 Cup cars with how much travel they have uh, between acceleration and braking, especially like with um, the suspension setups that they have on it. It's fun to watch. Daniel Suarez ends up winning that race after not making it to the clash. Not good for him, especially in a season where all of the focus is going to be on he and Ross Chastain and comparing the two as you have both Shane Van Gisbergen and Zane Smith sitting there in the crosshairs waiting to uh or they have Dana Suarez in their crosshairs rather waiting to take that seat so at least he was able to go out there and get a win in the NASCAR Mexico series hopefully that's a bit of a confidence booster for him overall let me know what you think in the comments was this a good race what's the rating that you gave it like and subscribe to the channel follow me on TikTok at break hard Instagram and Twitter at break hardborn